Hello, my name is Holly and I'm the children's librarian at Alamosa Public Library in Alamosa, Colorado. And this is Storytime Online. It's time to share a story, a story, a story. It's time to share a story, a story today with a little boy named Jack and another character named Jack and another character named Jack. It's time to share a story, a story today. In our second week of our summer reading program here at Alamos Public Library, we are going to explore Jack tales. There are many, 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 many stories about characters named Jack that go back many, 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 many years. People have been telling Jack stories for a long time. So today we're gonna share three Jack stories. And if you pick up your project pack at Alamosa Public Library, you will find magic beans inside. So I thought we should tell the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. But first, I'd like to share a very short Jack story with you. It's actually just a rhyme, one of the rhymes, in this book by Nina Cruz. It's called The Neighborhood Mother Goose. And on page 13, you'll find a Jack tale. And here it is. Here's Jack. This Jack tale goes like this. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Jack, jump over the candlestick. Do you think Jack is really jumping over that gigantic cupcake? I think Nina Cruz created some pretty cool illustrations. So that's a very old Jack tale about Jack jumping over the candlestick. But there's also the story that I bet many of you know called Jack and the Beanstalk. There are lots of Jack and the Beanstalk books that you can check out from our library. This is one of them. But last week, we had a visitor through the computer, and her name is Linda Batlin, and she was telling us stories. She's a storyteller. She didn't read us stories. She told them from her imagination. And since I have on my Imagine Your Story dragon shirt, for our summer reading program today, I thought, I bet I can imagine the story of Jack and the Beanstalk and tell my friends. So I'm going to tell you my version of Jack and the Beanstalk. And it goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a little boy and his name was Jack. And he lived on a very small farm with his mom. And his mama was a wonderful musician. But long ago, someone stole away all of her instruments. And she was very sad and she had no way to make any money to buy food or seeds for their garden on the farm. Well, they were left with only one thing and that was their old cow, Bessie. But one day they were so hungry that mama came to Jack and said, I'm so sorry, Jack. I know that you love Bessie, but you need to walk her to the market and sell her so that we can buy some food for dinner tonight and some seeds to plant in the garden so that we can eat tomorrow. So Jack was very sad, but he listened to his mama and he said, come on old Bessie. And he tied a rope around her neck and he started walking to the market. And on his way to the market, Jack ran across a little old woman. She was standing in the middle of the road and she said, ah, there you are, Jack. And Jack said, well, hello, were you waiting for me? And she said, yes, who do you have with you there? And he said, this is my old cow, Bessie. My mama said I need to take her to the market and sell her so that we can have some money to buy dinner tonight and some seeds to plant in the garden. Oh, a very wise woman, said the old lady. But I have a better idea. I think that you should give old Bessie to me and I will give you my five magic beans. And she reached into her pocket and she showed Jack five magic beans. Those are just five, five brown beans, said Jack. And she said, no, no, no. These are five magic beans. If 
you plant them in your garden, you will never want for anything again. Jack was very curious, and so he said, hmm. Mama said to sell Bessie the cow so that we could buy dinner tonight and buy some seeds to plant so that we could eat tomorrow. But magic beans sounds pretty good. So he said, it's a deal. And the old woman dropped the beans into Jack's hand and he handed the rope tied to Bessie to the old woman and off she walked slowly, slowly down the road. So Jack turned around and walked back home thinking, I have magic beans. This is such a great plan. Mama's gonna be so excited and so happy with me. But when he got home and told his mama what had happened, she was so frustrated that Jack had not followed her instructions and so upset that they did not have dinner tonight and so hungry that it was making her grumpy. She snatched those beans out of Jack's hand and before he could blink, she threw them out the window and she said, magic beans, off to bed with you, no supper tonight. Jack was very sad, climbed up into the loft where he slept and he sat in the window and by now it was dark. He looked up at the moon and he could see the beans down in the dirt on the ground and he began to cry. He cried and cried and cried, and the moon shone down on the beans, and the dirt around the beans warmed them, and Jack's tears watered them. And in the morning, I bet you can guess what had happened. A giant beanstalk had grown up in the middle of the yard. Well, Jack woke up early and said, I've got to find out what's at the top of this beanstalk. Maybe it's something that can help me and my mama. So he put on his shoes, pulled up his suspenders, and he started to climb up and up and up and up he went. He climbed so high that he was surrounded by clouds, white fluffy clouds, but he didn't stop. He kept climbing up and up and up. He climbed up those leaves like they were rungs on a ladder until he got to the very tippy top, broke up through the clouds, <gasps> and looked around and guess what he saw? A giant castle bigger than anything he had ever seen. Well, he stuck one toe out and tested it on the clouds in front of him and sure enough, he could walk. So he walked across those clouds all the way to the giant castle. He was very curious. When he got to the giant castle, it was so big that he knew if he knocked on the door, no one would hear him. He was as small as a mouse. But he saw that under the giant door, there was a crack just big enough for him to slip in. So he did. He looked around and he saw wonderful furniture. He heard beautiful music. And then he heard something in the kitchen. He walked, 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 and there was a cook cooking giant pancakes as big as Jack, stretched with his arms and his legs, making a circle, making pancakes in the kitchen. And Jack crept around until the cook saw Jack and said, oh no, no, you've got to get out of here. There's a big giant, he's very grumpy. And if he sees you, he might just scoop you up and eat you as an appetizer. But Jack wasn't afraid. He pretended to sneak out when really he went into the dining room and hid behind the legs of one of the giant tables. There was also a giant gilded chair at one end of the table. And Jack thought, I wonder who sits there? But you know. Sure enough, the music stopped and Jack heard thundering stomps coming from somewhere in the castle. And then he heard Fee, fi, fo, fum. Get out the way, here I come. The walls rattled, the earth shook, and then Jack heard, Cook, bring me my pancakes. Jack stood shivering behind the leg of the table, and in walked a giant. The giant plopped down in the big gilded chair and the cook, shaking too, brought out the biggest plate of pancakes Jack had ever seen. Jack's tummy rumbled and he hoped that the giant didn't hear it. The giant 
sparked up all of those delicious pancakes. And then he called, Cook, bring me my goose. Goose, thought Jack, what on earth is going on? But he was so curious, even though he was so afraid. So he stood shivering behind the leg of the dining room table as the cook brought in a goose and put it on the table. What is happening, thought Jack. The giant looked right into the face of that goose and said, Lay, goose! And the goose shimmied and shook and laid a golden egg. Jack could not believe it. One golden egg would be enough gold for him and his mama to go buy seeds and dinner for tonight and for many nights to come. He had to get that goose. So feeling very brave, he scooted closer to the giant. But the giant wasn't finished yet. He called, cook, bring me my golden heart. What on earth? But in came the cook, shivering and shaking. Here you are, and put a golden harp with a face at the top on the giant's table. And the giant looked right into the face of that golden harp and said, play. And the harp did. The harp plucked its own strings and played the most beautiful string music that Jack had ever heard. And then the face on the front of the golden harp began to sing a lullaby. And sure enough, that giant started to close his eyes and then with a heavy kerfunk, his head hit the table and he was snoring fast asleep. Now Jack was very afraid, but he was also feeling very brave and he knew that this chance wouldn't come again. So he shimmied up to the top of the table just like he climbed that beanstalk. He grabbed a hold of that goose that lays golden eggs. He grabbed that magic golden harp, slid down the leg of the table and started tiptoeing toward the door with the goose under one arm and the harp under the other arm. The harp continued to play. The harp knew if she stopped playing music, that giant might wake up and find them escaping. Jack got to the giant door. He slid the goose under the crack. He slid the harp under the crack. And last, he slid himself under the crack. And then, lickety split, he started to run for that beanstalk. He ran with that goose under one arm and that harp under the other arm as fast as he could. But he hadn't made it very far when he felt those clouds begin to shake. And he heard the thundering roar of the giant calling, Fee, fi, fo, fum, better look out, here I come. That giant must have woken up when he slid that harp out under the crack in the door. Well, Jack was very frightened. He knew he had to get to that beanstalk before the giant caught him and ate him as an appetizer for dinner. Jack got all the way to the leaves of the beanstalk and... Because he was so quick and nimble, he began to slide down the leaves. But he heard that giant coming. He heard the giant thundering down the beanstalk at the top. He heard that giant roaring, fee, fi, fo, fum, better look out, here I come. But Jack got to the bottom first. He dropped that goose and he dropped that magic golden harp and he called, mama, bring me the axe. Mama didn't ask questions. She could hear that he was afraid. So she brought that ax and Jack picked it up and went thwack, thwack, thwack on one side of that beanstalk. But here came the giant and Mama said, oh my. So Jack went to the other side of the beanstalk and thwack, 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 chopped at the beanstalk until timber. That beanstalk began to crash. And the giant began to crash down with it. Jack covered his eyes. He covered his ears and waited for the biggest crash he'd ever heard. And that giant to scoop him up and eat him as an appetizer for breakfast the next morning. But it didn't happen. Jack looked and the giant beanstalk had disappeared. He looked up and there was no giant. And there was not a cloud in the sky. Those magic beans 
had saved his life. He was worried though. Where was the goose that laid golden eggs? Where was the magic harp? But there was the goose and Mama was holding the harp, playing the most beautiful music that Jack had ever heard. Mama said, Jack, Jack, where did you find my harp? It was stolen long ago and I have not been able to play music for people ever since. Jack said, the giant had the harp and now we have his goose. So from that day to this, Mama played her beautiful music for all of the people in the village. They had enough gold to buy seeds for their garden and enough gold to buy dinner for that night and many nights ahead. And that is the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. The end. I hope that you will come to the library and pick up your project pack if you live close to Alamosa Public Library and plant your seeds. I put some magic seeds, maybe not five. I might have put more than five. I might have put a little less than five, but they are seeds just like this, magic beans, and you can plant them in the little pot that's in your project pack. It's pretty cool. Before you go, I have one more Jack story for you, and it is from Tommy DePaola's collection of nursery tales. It's not Jack and the Beanstalk, it's a different Jack. Watch and see. This is a story called How Jack Went to Seek His Fortune, and it was written by Joseph Jacobs. Tommy DePaola drew these illustrations for his book, Tommy DePaola's Favorite Nursery Tales and you can check it out from Alamosa Public Library. The story goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Jack, and one morning he decided to go and seek his fortune. He hadn't gone very far before he met a cat. Mew, 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 where are you going, Jack? said the cat. I am going to seek my fortune. May I go with you? Yes, said Jack the more the merrier. So on they went. Jiggity jolt, jiggity jolt. They went a little farther and they met a dog. Where are you going, Jack? said the dog. Woof, woof. I am going to seek my fortune. May I go with you? Yes, said Jack, the more the merrier. So on they went. Jiggity jolt, jiggity jolt. They went a little further and they met a goat. Meh, where are you going, Jack? Meh. I am going to seek my fortune. May I go with you? Yes, said Jack. The more the merrier. So on they went. Jiggity jolt, jiggity jolt. They went a little farther and they met a bull. Where are you going, Jack? said the bull. Mmm. I am going to seek my fortune. May I go with you? Yes, said Jack. The more the merrier. So on they went. Jiggity jolt, jiggity jolt. They went a little farther and they met a rooster. Where are you going, Jack? Er, 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 said the rooster. I am going to seek my fortune. May I go with you? Yes, said Jack. The more the merrier. So on they went. Jiggity jolt, jiggity jolt. Well, they went on till it was nearly evening and they began to think of some place where they could spend the night. About this time, they came in sight of a house. And Jack told them to keep still while he went up and looked in through the window. And inside, there were some robbers counting their money. Then Jack went back and told the animals to wait till he gave the word and then to make all the noise they could. So when they were all ready, Jack gave the word and the cat mewed and the dog barked woof 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 and the goat bleated meh. 
and the goat bellowed, moo, and the rooster crowed, and all together they made such a dreadful noise that it frightened the robbers all away. And then they went in and took over the house. Jack was afraid the robbers would come back during the night. So when it was time to go to bed, he put the cat in the rocking chair, and he put the dog under the table, and he put the goat upstairs, and he put the bull in the cellar. And the rooster flew up onto the roof, and Jack went to bed. By and by, the robbers saw it was all dark, and they sent one man back to the house to look for their money. Before long, he came back in a great fright and told them his story. I went back to the house, said he, and went in and tried to sit down in the rocking chair, and there was an old woman knitting, and she stuck her knitting needles into me. That was the cat, you know. I went to the table to look for the money, and there was a shoemaker under the table, and he hammered his nails into me. That was the dog, you know. I started to go upstairs, and there was a man up there threshing, and he knocked me down with his flail. That was the goat, you know. I started to go down to the cellar, and there was a man down there chopping wood, and he knocked me back upstairs with his axe. That was the bull, you know. But I wouldn't have minded all that if it hadn't been for that little fellow on top of the house who kept a hollering, Chuck him up to me! Chuck him up to me! Of course, that was the cockadoodle doo The end. I hope that you enjoyed our Jack stories today. And I hope that if you live in our valley, you'll come pick up your project pack this week. Sorry, my, this doesn't usually happen, but I'm getting a text message on my phone. Let me just see who this is. You guys, it's Larry the library gnome. He's texting me a clue about where he is. Let me read it to you. It says, the house of this color has beds big and small. I am keen to live green. I wanna tend it all. The house of this color has beds big and small. I am keen to live green. I want to tend it all. Hmm. Somewhere green? With beds? What kind of beds? What kind of beds do you tend? What does this mean, Larry? Maybe you guys can figure it out. Well, it's time for us to sing goodbye. And our goodbye song goes like this. See you later, alligator. In a wild crocodile, give a hug, ladybug, blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, sweet baboon, out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear, wave goodbye, butterfly, goodbye. Bye.